In this video, we're going to talk about how to allocate joint costs to products by using the constant gross margin net realizable value method. Now, I know that's a mouthful and it's a little complex, but hang with me and we'll get through this. So let's take an example where we run a dairy farm that produces raw milk at a cost of $300,000. And then we have a separating process that runs costs of $200,000. And these are our joint costs right here. We need to allocate these joint costs to our products. And what are our products? Well, we produce some whole milk and then we produce some cream. But we don't know the sales value at the split-off point of the cream, although the sales value at split-off of the whole milk is 240000 But that's okay because what we're actually going to do is we're going to process these products further. Right, both of these products, we're going to process uh, the, the whole milk into non-fat milk and then the cream into sour cream. So we can go ahead and for purposes of this example, we'll just ignore the sales value at split off point of that whole milk. Right? We're not going to deal with that here. We're just going to process these all the way through to these products. And what we need to know now is of the 500000 in joint costs, and I got this 500000 by adding this 300000 here and the 200000 here. We need to find a way to allocate those joint costs among these two products, among the non-fat milk and the sour cream. So we are going to use this constant gross margin NRV method to do that. And here's how we start out with that method. First, what we need to do is we need to calculate the overall gross margin for the entire firm, right? So the entire firm, we need to calculate overall gross margin, okay? So to do that, we need to add the sales value of the non-fat milk and the sour cream. That's $800,000, okay? So it's 800000 and then we subtract all the costs, right? So we've got 500000 in joint costs. We're going to subtract that, but we also have what we call, we can think of incremental costs, but also is separable. Let me put separable here. These are separable costs in that this 40000 here is unique to this whole milk to get it from whole milk to non-fat milk, right? It doesn't have anything to do with taking the cream to sour cream and so forth. And so then we'll call this, this cost of further processing the cream, we'll also refer to that as a separable cost. It's unique, this 110000 to making the cream and the sour cream. Okay, it's not a joint cost. And so we're going to subtract those separable costs. So that would be 110000 And then the other one is $40,000. And so what does that give us? Well, 156. So that's going to give us an overall gross margin for the entire firm of $150,000, right? So this is the gross margin of the firm, right? The entire company. Now, we need to calculate the gross margin percentage from that, the gross margin percentage. And so we take the gross margin of 150000 and we divide it by $800,000, right, by the total sales. And that's going to give us 18.75%. Okay, so that's the gross margin for the entire firm. Now, what we do next is now we're going to take the sales value of each, the final sales value of each of the products, right? The non-fat milk and the sour cream, right? And I'm actually, I'm going to, I'm going to set these out. Let's, let's put here, we'll say this is the non-fat, non-fat milk, okay? And then we'll have the sour cream. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the sales value of each, so 500,000 for sour cream, for example, and then we're going to multiply that by the gross margin percentage to get the gross margin, right? So if we multiply the final sales value of sour cream 500,000 times 18.75%, this gross margin percentage, that's going to give us a gross margin of 93,750 for the sour cream division. Now what we're going to do is we're going to now deduct that. We're going to subtract the gross margin there that we just computed and that's going to give us $406,250, right? And what that is, is the total production costs, total production costs related to the sour cream. Hope you can see that there. Make sure there's plenty of space. So now 
now let's go over and now we can actually we'll do the same thing with the non-fat milk and I'll explain why this is important in a moment just hang with me so we've got the 300,000 in final set so that sales value right and we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna apply this 18.75 percent to get the gross margin it's gonna give us 56,250 okay again this is the gross margin here for the non-fat milk we're gonna deduct that right from the sales value. we're, we're basically backing out we're finding out what the gross margin is and then backing it out of the set final sales value to get this total production cost that's 243 750 243,750 for the non-fat milk now what we do is now that we've backed out and we've got our, our total production costs here for each of the products to total production cost just abbreviating there now we're going to subtract out the separable costs so for the non-fat milk remember that was that forty thousand dollars that was the further processing amount to get it to non-fat milk okay so now we're going to subtract that to the separable cost so I'll just put here separable okay and then that's going to give us two hundred and three thousand seven hundred and fifty okay and then now let's do that for the sour cream so for the sour cream, the, the amount, the separable was $110,000, $110,000, okay, and then that's going to give us, two, by deducting that separable cost, gives us $296,000, two, or $296,250. Now, you might be noticing that these two, these two amounts here, the $203,750 and the $296,250, add up to five hundred thousand dollars if we were to add these two together they add up to five hundred thousand dollars now you might be wondering well what's the significance of that well if you remember if you remember that's the amount of our joint costs that we need to allocate right so we've been doing all these all these convoluted calculations here and ultimately we have found a way to allocate these joint costs right so now what, what the, the moral of the story is, so to speak, the non-fat milk division is going to get allocated of that 500000 in joint costs, it's going to get allocated $203,750. And the sour cream product line is going to get allocated 296250 of those five hundred thousand dollars in joint costs now of course when that division or that product line is being evaluated then also they would consider as well the separable costs and so forth we're just we're just talking in this video about basically how we go about allocating or spreading those those five hundred thousand dollars now it didn't happen in this example but just a little caveat it's possible that it might be the numbers are weird in such a way that you actually have one of these allocations end up being negative, right? You might, that's the one thing about this method that's different from like something like the relative sales value method for allocating joint costs is that you actually could have, you could have a negative allocation. We don't have that in this example, but it's, it's possible. So ju just a heads up. Now, one, so people like this method because it's, it's kind of easy. I mean, I know there's a lot of calculations, but what you, once you have it set up in Excel or so forth, it'd be easy to do especially when you don't know the product or the value of one of your products at, at the split off point and so but one drawback about this method is it's assuming it's it's making an assumption it's assuming that all products have the same ratio of cost to sales value right because remember what we do first is we compute the overall gross margin for the whole firm right and then we get that we use that to get the gross margin percentage for the whole firm and then that percentage is applied to the final. So we've got these final sales values, right? And that's what we start with here once we have the, the, the gross margin percent for the whole firm. And that's what we use. That 18.75% is, is what we use. We multiply those final sales values by to get the gross margin for each product line, right? And so then we basically, we're in a way, we're backing out what these joint costs are for for each product line 